<coughs> Good evening, everybody. Oh, what? You've started already? I've started already. I wasn't paying attention to the timer, clearly. <laughs> I, was, I was busy faffing around getting the chat set up. Hello, folks. I'm Sam. Uh, <coughs> above me is Matt. If you want to get the names right, that's how to do it. I'm Sam. That's Matt has the ears. I have the shirts. Uh, that's that's the way that we uh, that we do this stuff. Um, anyway, hello. Uh, this evening we're going to be doing uh, some sand patch grade action uh, for you, and uh, and we're coming uh, from the Xbox One X. Uh, we had plenty of requests uh, to, uh, to to see some console game in action, so we're doing some console game in action. Uh, we will try and source a PlayStation to do some PlayStation stuff as well, but that might prove difficult because we don't have uh, a PlayStation dev kit within our two collections of what we've managed to steal from the office before we all got locked down. Um, so, uh, so yeah. But, but anyway, uh, what we're going to show off is uh, is uh, talk to me of resolutions this evening, Matt. What are you running at? Resolutions. So uh, all my kit here is set up as 1080p. Uh, I don't have any 4K kit. Um, the Xbox One X, um, however, will render to a 4K scene internally and then downsample it to a 1080p. So what you end up with is the same 1080p shot but with significantly more detail on it because it gets a bigger scene and uses all that extra information to create much, much better anti-aliasing. Okay, fine. And uh, and as far as what we're showing off, how is the colour? Because I was looking at this when we first hooked up this evening, uh, and it looked like the contrast was off a bit. Yeah, it looks like the capture card might need a little bit more tuning. We tried to improve it a little bit. It's not too far off now from what I'm seeing on my monitor. But um, yeah, if you if you notice any anomalies with the way that the colours are rendering, um, then uh, uh, wait for YouTube videos and and uh, other other things that uh, get done. And if you go back and look at the last time we showed off Sam Patch, you'll see that it looks a bit different there. But the lighting build was a different one then as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's possibly not as dingy as it might look this evening. Um, uh, I tell you what, when you're done, take a take a screen grab off the old Xbox One X and uh, and sling it my way, and I'll chuck it up on the forums or something. Okay. Right, okay, that'll do. So then you'll be able to compare and contrast accordingly. Right, there we go. So, what are we doing? What are we driving? What are we playing? Come on. So on. we're on Sandpatch Grade. Uh, so I thought we would start with just a, uh, a nice gentle run. So let's go into the uh, timetable. You see there are 65 services showing up on this now. Um, and we'll go with the AC4400 CW, but I will put it into way in two livery because i just think it looks better uh i think what we'll do also is we'll give us a bit of a uh, bit of summer rain uh if you insist why not i've had enough of it i could have the sunshine back now i know it was really hot last week but <laughs> you know, i quite like it um but uh, that's just me all right there's q130 uh and off we go uh, what build are you running on here? Is this a release candidate build, this or is, is this a, still a dev build? No, this is a release candidate build. Um, I don't know if you can see up there. It says test. Te what test means in uh, in UE4 dev builds is uh, is actually this is the one. This is a basically a shipping type build. Uh, they say dev otherwise in the top corner. Okay. Right. right. So we have four thousand tons behind us, fifty fifty cars behind us. We've got two locos on the front. That's why it shows fifty two, and we're a bit short of a mile long. Um, and we're not going to do the whole thing because it's about ninety minutes long. This run, uh, you'll notice this a lot of the uh, almost. I think all the sand patch services now have the duration tacked on the end uh, as well, so you can see because there's quite wide varieties in there now uh, in terms of the lengths uh, of the different services so they will now say um, how long they are so this one is 90 minutes we're not going to run all 90 minutes tonight um, how many uh, did that show how many cars we had there as well yeah there so was 50, 52, 52 vehicles in total okay right let me uh, just get the train enabled uh, switch the air brakes on zoom on the controller uh, switch to cutting and leave and Cut the brakes in. And when I'll you're playing normally, you know, just for laughs and so on, do you usually play on PC or console, or do you mix it up? I mix it up normally on PC, but um, to be honest, if I'm on PC and quite often using the controller, I really, really like the controller. 
Um, but uh, no, I've got PlayStation 4 under my desk here, and uh, I quite often use the PlayStation 4. Okay. And uh, for those saying that the rain is very loud, uh, it's, it might be too loud. We'll know once we're, once we're underway. The reason for that is that we've changed our audio mix for this stream uh, because when we did the Bakerloo line we got a lot of comments saying that the Bakerloo line was too quiet. Well that was because the microphone volume was too loud and the game volume was too quiet. So we're going to try and get that a little bit better this time around. So if you can't hear what we're saying once we're underway, there you go, we've already got a little bit more mic please. Um, then uh, if you wouldn't mind down tempoing the sound ever so slightly there Matt, that'd be great. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that we've got the, the volume absolutely spot on. But the thing when, when we did the Bakerloo line, if it was too quiet then, that's easily solved. Uh, if, you, uh, if you avoid playing the game while you've got two people on microphones having a conversation at the same time, just turn your game volume up and uh, jobs are good. Are we on Xbox? Yes, we are. I'd, uh, check the description there. As mentioned, we are playing on Xbox today. We're playing on the Xbox One X. Just to um, prove it's on an Xbox, I've just popped up the Xbox panel. Oh, someone's been playing fishing. Oh yeah, too right. Brakes are coming off slowly. We can see we're just about getting the we're getting motion now. Takes a minute. So with it raining, this would be a good opportunity to show off some of the old variable adhesion going on, surely. And have you also disabled the motion blur before it starts to kick in? No, I, I haven't actually. Otherwise it's going to look horrible, isn't it? At these speeds, no, not really. It's not too okay. bad. Alright, all right. I don't know. You can see it's it spinning. I'm blaming you. Let me slow it down. I'll just use the the other thing that, by the way, that we can see. You can see here on the bottom. Uh, you can see the um, the brake, uh, the three brake uh, input um, readouts, the percentages. They're both at zero at the moment. As I press the X button, you can see it high, and you can now visibly see which one is selected. So it's on the loco brake now. So if I just apply some loco brake, um, we can just slow it down, so I'll, and I'll get it spinning. It actually is difficult to get the sparks to appear. They are there, Alex, but the problem is, I say the problem, is that these darn trains have got real slip protection systems on them, which actually makes them, as soon as they start slipping, they cut in and stop them from slipping, which is um, just plain difficult and not fun. Um, well, I, I think that's possibly a safety feature. Possibly a safety feature, not fun feature, but a safety feature, yes. Um, so let's get the brakes off, right, that's, if I just now crank it straight up to not J. Fairly quickly lose grip. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yeah. yep. You, you, you're definitely losing grip there. And so what the uh, so the, the the loco itself will then compensate for losing grip. Yeah. Uh, in order to uh, to keep the the uh, momentum going. Up. Yeah, so it effectively it cuts the power um, and um, and tries to keep control, get, get control of the train back again. Um, so if you were to now uh, hit sanding, uh, would that actually have the kind of impact you'd, effect that you'd uh, expect? Yes, if you put sanding on, which you can't do from outside, you've got to press the button to get that, okay. um, then the um, it does provide extra grip. So. Like at the moment, you can see I'm I'm grit I'm losing I've not got 100% grip. This does not mean wheels have 0% grip. When it says it's sliding in the bottom there, by the way, your wheels just have to be not 100% gripped. So they could be creep because the AC4400 actually has a thing called creep control, where it will actually in some cases keep some of the wheels slightly not quite gripped. They're quite slipping because in a slippy situation, that's actually a slightly better place to be than uh, than otherwise. So it will still show up as though you are slipping in that instance. Uh, the same is true with dynamic brakes. If you're coming down a hill and... Um, I'm just going to back the power off a bit now. Uh, if you're coming down a hill and you apply the dynamic brakes, dynamic brakes, because of the way they work, can't stop the wheels of a train because if the, wheel, the minute the wheels have stopped, there's no 
power to create the braking force to stop the wheels anymore. Right. Um, but what they can do is slow the wheels down to where they're not running as fast, but they are still running round. So they're generating, you fl- they find a balance point essentially to where they're not rotating as fast as they should be, which would show up as a slip. Um, okay. But actually, if you looked outside, you'd see they were still going round, but they're just not going round at quite the right speed. So that's uh, just the... Uh, a worthwhile comment from yonder chat there. Are you set up to, uh, to stream without the cameras on? Oh, sorry, yes. So that people can see the game, you know? I mean, I know we're so very pretty, but, uh, but let's show off the game. Someone asked what okay. we were hauling. We're hauling 50 double stacks. Oh, nice. And these weights are all individually calculated, right? So yeah, every uh, car has its own weight. The locos obviously have weight as well. So if I now press the pause button, we're hauling. It's a 4,021.1 ton train, including the uh, the locomotives. Okay. And so. is this about the longest consist there is on this route? Yeah, 50, yeah, oh, 50 plus locomotives um, is generally where we've um, we've pitched the uh, the trains at. Uh, it's it's um, on, on service mode. They'll all be around that. Um, on the consoles in in scenarios, some of them might be a little shorter, uh, and um, the, in, on PC they might be a little bit longer. But service mode, they're all around this length or a little bit shorter, depending on what they're doing. So there's a coal train, for example, that departs. Uh, I'm going a bit too fast here. <laughs> there's a coal train that departs um, uh, from Rockwood, which is only 25 wagons, but because it is 25 wagons in reality, so it's. It's, it's not the case that they're all long trains. Some trains are shorter. Um, uh, which uh, which measurement of uh, of ton are we using? We're we using US, UK, or metric? US, I believe. No, I, 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 I'm not letting you get away with an I believe. I don't know then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, just home. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's US right. tons. Uh, we, we can find that out later. I know every time I do measurements, I have to go and find, ask someone and remind myself if it's long tons, short tons, or anything else. Yeah. And then I forget 10 minutes later. I don't, well, I'll, I will endeavour to not let you forget. <laughs> right. Uh, so if you've got something like raining going on, if you've got uh, a, a more complicated environment than it being a, a clear day and sunny, does that have a, a, an effect on frame rate? Rain can have an impact on frame rate, but it's a lot less than it used to in earlier days of the game. The earlier days of the game, rain used to have a fairly big impact on the frame rate. These days, it's nominal. Um, okay. We've got more efficient ways of calculating where rain should be. Oh, get the window open, would you? So that mm-hmm. we can uh, we can enjoy the uh, the sights, the sounds, and the smells. And we've also got the the inevitable request for some horn action on the approach to the next crossing. A long, long, short, long, please. I can't see the crossing. <laughs> that looks like one. Hmm? No, that's not a crossing. That's a junction. Oh, what's that? Uh, what's that widget on the side of the thing there? Oh, I see, that's a branch. Okay, fair enough. Actually, you should know this route better than I do, given that you've been involved in its development. Oh, there we go. We've got a crossing coming up. So, what uh, what weather system is the uh, is the most? Uh, impactful when it comes to uh, to adhesion then. If, I, if I'm playing in it snowing and there's ice and all that kind of business, is that more convoluted to, to control than it is in the wet? Uh, maximum snow, maximum rain are about the same. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, have we done any work on the on the sound this time round? It is the same sound as uh, yeah, it's as the same the, sounds. Um, the uh, audio the team call. have remixed some of the audio, um, right. but the source samples are all the same source samples. Just going into UE, uh, the new version of Unreal Four meant that we needed to remix the audio, um, but uh, no, it's the same same horns, same engine sounds, etc. Right. Uh, did the MFDs work with all the different strings that you've got in there? Say again, sorry? The uh, MFDs, multifunction displays, do they, they all work correctly? Uh, to, well, this, uh, we've only got partial functionality. In reality, those things are really complicated and they do all sorts of things. We've got speed control, distance measurement, and all the air brake controls that I used there at the beginning. So, And both right. MFDs can be used. Um, for various functionality, so uh, there's some, there were some issues in the original one whereby, for example, the feed valve didn't work properly. That's all fixed and working on this one, although there's not really much use for it. it it's there if you wish to play with it. Um, if I press the right button, it would help. Um, but then you've got so, and when you're loading coal, you'll use the uh, the speed control functionality, which is kind of like cruise control, but it's for running very very slowly through coal mines, uh, through coal loaders. Good stuff. Now, if you do start wheel slipping or uh, or sliding along because you're braking too aggressively, or similar, does it actually take away your action points? No, no. There's no penalties for slipping and sliding. There uh, should be. <laughs> there's conflicting views on that one. There's conflicting well, look, views if on that you one. The maximum score you should surely, surely you should run uh, with uh, with maximum capabilities, right? So uh, so avoiding the. Uh, the slip and the slide and the so forth. Uh, I, you know, that you only ever get positive points is fine by me, but surely, surely for for ultimate scoring, you want to have driven ultimately. Yeah, I. To be honest, that's what I would have thought as well. Uh, but I've had two or three people now who are drivers um, say, "Please don't penalise wheel slip, sliding perhaps, because um, sliding means you're not applying the brakes correctly." Oh, okay. Right. Um, but. Um, but for uh, spinning the wheels, um, because it's really difficult to know what's the actual the situation is under the track, it's not uncommon for drivers to spin the wheels at all. Um, no. the, what's, what should happen is prolonged wheel spin probably should be, uh, have a penalty on it. Um, but obviously none of this is in the game right now. Um, but something like that, so if where things start spinning and you don't do anything about it, well maybe that should be something that... Um, because uh, then you're clearly not paying attention. A real driver would be actually reacting to that uh, and doing something about it. Fair enough. So as uh, Dino Baxi's just said, uh, train burnouts are permitted. Except for the fact that, uh, as I said before, most trains have no fun system switched on. I will find the trains that have them. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I shall abuse them mercilessly. Uh, okay, good. Right, well, that's, 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 all, uh, that's all jolly promising. Uh, I don't know, I saw another question. I thought I'd go. Uh, it's going to be around. Uh, what else? Um, uh, someone was asking, have we featured the uh, the livery designer? Yes, we did in the last stream. You can find it on YouTube right now if you want to go and have a look. Obviously, watch this first, but you know you can go and have a look at that later on. Uh, how customizable is the HUD? Somebody else asked. It's not. Is the is the short answer? You have the option of the uh, the big version or the small version or the not on screen version. So this is the small version. That's the small? Okay. Pop into settings. You'll notice also oh, measurement units, temperature units, gradient units are now automatic. You can switch that between automatic, metrical and imperial. So you can nice. fix things to whatever you want or leave them as automatic to follow the route. And then the speedometer HUD size. So if I take that change and then that's now grown the HUD a fair bit. Um, right. So you can you can see that. So a if bit you're easier. sitting a little further away from your screen, you've got a fighting chance of being able to read it. Yeah. Train uh, boy, can you get in the bathroom? Still no. a thing? Yes, cabin sway is still a thing. Yeah, it's um, swaying all over the place at the it's moment. It's doing a little bit of, of, <coughs> uh, of the jiggle at the moment, and you can disable it if you want to. Yes. Again, there's a setting for turning that off. Oh, 
Oh, I see. I, I, we're throwing all caution to the wind now, and you're just going for a stroll while in motion. I would never do that, apart from all the times that I do that. I say, I've seen you fall off trains. I never fall. I throw myself on trains. That's the <laughs> difference. I'll demonstrate another feature that's much, much sought after by everybody. We've told everybody it's here. Um, if you press and hold... Uh, oh, no, the camera's not up. There's no point in me showing it. Press and hold the menu button, or the start button, or the options button, and say goodbye to the HUD. And that's on both consoles? That's on both consoles. Nice. Options button being the PS4 equivalent. Uh, can you disable the, uh, the wheel mo motion blur? from the controller or the the options menu no no that's at the moment that's only on control f2 on the keyboard um but i could plug a keyboard in and make that happen yes okay so you can disable it on console it's just a bit of a faff to do so yeah uh could we get that added into the the main options menu how big, yeah, how big it's, a job is it? it it's it, it should be easy enough it's already there on the pc i don't know quite why it didn't get added on the pc or on the on the console build so okay. Um, it's a uh, it's a case of the work has been done essentially for that we just need to put it in the right place. Thank you, Callum. That was the question I was going to answer. Uh, does is there a performance uh, improvement on PC compared to how Heavy Hall used to run? Um, to some extent, yes. Four twenty three brings some performance improvements with it, so yes, you'll see a performance improvement. Um, the previous and, and build because we've remastered it and and learned quite a lot since then does that bring any benefit with it as well yes i mean the the route runs it does there's a lot less hitching as you're driving along in the route because we've optimized the um the assets and made them a lot smaller um i mean there's just it's one of those things that when you look back at how things were built when we didn't know any better um you want you want to cry just a little bit at the way we did things thinking it was the right way to do things uh, just to give an example um, when this, when the locomotives on here were originally made, um, they had something like over a hundred materials, um, and you know, having all of those materials turns out to cause unreal major pain and lots of stuttering. Um, mm. And we make milocos now with twenty materials or ten materials, a lot less. So part of the work for the um, the work in this case has been to. Uh, update these locos to use significantly less materials, be a lot more optimal on the mesh, a lot more optimal on the skeleton, um, and that alone means that when it previously, for example, when a train was coming round the corner, you'd see it hitch as it came round the corner, as it as, as it loaded into memory, and right. you shouldn't see that anymore. Um, oh, you've got some cheeky overtaking going on there. You're being done by a truck. I'm being done by a, a truck. Winnebago? That's a Winnebago. I've got a few done more tons than him, to be fair. Oh, come on, man, have, have some pride. <laughs> okay uh, no hold on someone asked a CSX question that I wanted to do as well See, I, I pay attention to what if I ignore what you're saying I can spot all the questions but if I listen to your answers I can't um, no I missed it it'll turn up again uh, is the uh, is the route longer? That's the one I wanted. Uh, uh, is the, the route, route is, any longer than the CSX route? The route is the same. Let me zoom okay. out. Uh, so that is the route. And the bottom right there is Cumberland Terminal, which is this massive mess. This is where we started. Um, and That's then not mess. That's a thing of beauty. It is a thing of beauty. Uh, that then takes you to Sandpatch Summit, which is here. This is the the uh, at the top of the uh, the ride. Um, and then you've got uh, Rockwood here. Rockwood Mine is just up here. This is, um, I want to say Acton Mine, but I can't remember the actual name, something like that down here. Um, you've got Mance Curve here, which is a bit of a landmark on the route as well. Uh, in terms of the journey, up here um, to Heinemann is the fastest leg of the route, speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. As you pass, finish through Heinemann and turn left, uh, turn west, um, the speeds drop down to averaging 25 miles an hour because it's quite windy and the, the real the, the grunt of the gradient starts around where the blue mark is there as well so between right. there and there you're climbing at about 1.8 1.9% 1 all the way um, and then it's a gentle um, downgrade up to here but this doesn't actually so it's, you're going up quite a way but then you're not going down as far um, when, by the time you get to Rockwood um, I'm with you so I, I, uh, the one thing is if you've got this whole downhill section uh, trotting on there 
if you are anything like me frequently, you will apply the emergency brake. Uh, is the, is adhesion going to make the emergency brake more likely to to create a sliding? Mode? Potentially, but when you apply the emergency brake, um, you're going to have uh, somewhere in the region of 200 axles trying to stop that train, um, which right. means that actually. Um, you've got an awful out. lot of braking power there, which means that, uh, given by the weight, which means actually it stops quite quickly. Um, once it once it actually has a mind to stop, because it takes a minute to get going. Um, but uh, yeah, it can stop quite quickly in that instance. Uh, we've got a couple of people asking to see the livery designer here now, but we're playing on console. Mm -hmm. Is it any different to what we've seen on PC? No, no, it's all. exactly it's exactly the same. The only yes. difference is the controls. In fact. The control scheme is exactly the same as well. Yes. Uh, when you use the livery designer on PC, you do not move things around with the mouse. You use uh, either the controller that you've got plugged in or you use the keyboard. So the control system is going to be absolutely identical and it performs in exactly the same way. Yeah. So if you want to see the livery uh, designer, go check the last stream. Uh, do you want to do a quick refresher of what all the stuff on the HUD is? Yes, down on the bottom right there, we have the uh, tractive force meter, which is showing our pounds of force, or kilopounds of force, uh, which is the same as that green bar on the HUD here. Um, then the next four gauges, the circular ones, are your brake gauges, uh, brake cylinder, BC, main reservoir, MR, ER is your e equalizing reservoir, BP is your brake pipe. Um, you need to know how brakes work to fully understand that, but bluntly BC tells you how many brakes, how the brakes are uh, applying on your locomotive. Brake pipe is indicating what the pressure is down the length of the train. Um, you also get on the on the on the train itself that you can get the uh, the rear um, brake pipe pressure as well. So you can imagine your train is nearly a mile long. If you are letting the air out effectively, when you um, release the brakes I think it is it basically just opens a hole in the front of the brake pipe and air starts coming out um, so yeah I can't remember if that's release or apply but air starts just leaking out the front of the pipe which means that the pressure at the front and the back of the pipe is different so you can use the gauges to tell you what the pressure difference is there uh, in the main part of the HUD the central part along the bottom you've got the brake gauges um, or the brake inputs so you can see that the one of them is coloured white so if I press X button which is uh, a different button, square button, um, then you can cycle which of the brake functions that the um, trigger and the shoulder button use on the left hand side. I forget the PlayStation terminology for that. L1 and R2, L2 is it? Bumpers. Or something? Bumpers. Bumpers, sorry. Bumpers. Um, so if I, I've, if I cut the power so that I'm not trying to be clever, and um, I'm currently selected to the loco brake. So which is what this one over on the right hand side here so if I now press the trigger you can see the lever moving and you can see the percentage going up you can also see the brake cylinder is now showing it's got air in it and now you and you will to some extent it'd be difficult to see the speed going down because I'm trying to use um, six axles to stop um, uh, 4,000 tons which is possible but it's it's a slow job um, so if I release the brakes now, so what you can see there is the gauges on the bottom are your inputs and the gauges on the left are your outputs essentially. So you can see what you're putting in and you can also see what the result of those changes are. And then you use the X key to switch between the two. Um, you want to use your train brake to apply the brakes on all axles on the train and then your locomotive brakes just to apply the axles on where you are. If you're running light loco, just use the loco brakes. If you're running with a train connected, then use the train brakes because you'll stop faster. Got you. So, uh, so Josh wants to know what safety systems are included here. So this train's just got the alerter, uh, which I've not got turned on at the moment. But every now and again, the train will just start beeping. You press the B button on the Xbox controller or the circle on the PlayStation controller just to shut the, the alerter up. You also get a visual warning uh, as a square somewhere around about here that pops up to just remind you that it's beeping. Right. Um, and that's switched on over here somewhere there's a fuse that you turn on for safety systems. Now I'm going to hunt around and try and find it. The radio... Not that one. No, you want that one. It'd be one of those leave other that, Leave that one alone. Uh, fuel pump, we don't need that. Turn that off. Uh, uh, there is no change to the menu music there, Railway King. 
Uh, is it, I think it's even turned off to begin with, isn't it? Yes. Is it turned off by default? Menu music is turned off by default. Yeah, we wanted. We we you've got there's a, there's like natural audio in the dioramas and the backgrounds, and so that's what you hear now. The idea was to make it a bit more relaxing and and, uh, uh, and passive. Uh, Darwin, if you go back and watch the uh, ICE stream from last week, you will see all those things working. So, looking at the rest of the HUD, um, the white line around the outside is where I, my speed is, is currently, which as you can see is 31, 30, about 30 miles an hour, and you can see the digital readout in the bottom centre that says we're doing 31. Next to the 31 is an up arrow, that is your reverser position, uh, which is this uh, lever here on this loco, which is either going to be generally in one of four states, which is, uh, in this loco I think it's just the three, which is forwards, um, neutral and reverse. Um, that's obviously which direction your train will go as you apply power. Um, above the 32 is the accelerometer. Uh, now the accelerometer, if you look at it carefully, is actually cut, it's quartered, um, so that, and it's semi-transparent so that you can see the bar in the middle. So if, that, if you can see that at the moment I am showing a little bit of acceleration. So as that moves down, um, I'm accelerating. If I put lots of brakes on, you'll see it move forward. So you can see right. su very, very tiny amounts of acceleration and braking. You can actually see with the way that that is uh, because it's um, semi-transparent. And the quartering gives you an exact idea of where the middle of that sphere is, uh, the circle is as well. Um, to the left of the accelerometer is the throttle setting. Now there's two triangles there that tell me I can have more or less throttle. I haven't reached the limit. If I push it up to eight, you see the top one disappears. I'm at the limit of that, that, that handle. So if I now drop it down to zero, then you'll notice that the minimum, it hasn't actually gone off. Uh, it says I can still go lower, and that's because this train has a um, dynamic brake combined handle. So if I now push it into setup position, uh, I can now put it in, and now you'll notice that the left-hand input brake gauge is now showing um, electric braking is applied, and we're now applying negative force on the tractive force meter because we're now using the dynamic brakes to actually try and slow the train down and you'll notice that we're now showing quite considerable uh, drop in speed um, on the accelerometer so if I cut the dynamic brakes off put it back in throttle there we go powers spinning back up again yeah, that's it. Um, your current speed limit is uh, right top centre at the moment, uh, 50 miles an hour at the minute, um, and that is um, where the red, the red mark is, that's your current speed limit. On the right hand side there is your gradient, at the moment we are going upwards 0.4%, uh, and then the grey box below it is where you get a visual indicator of the safety system. When the alerter goes off you get a big yellow circle in there as you've seen on some of the other trains which is then the other the visual alert again for the um, for the alert to go off the harassment box the harassment box yes okay uh, several people have asked what time the game will be releasing on Thursday uh, so uh, UTC wise you're probably looking at uh, just after 1600 UTC uh, that would be our our typical release time, somewhere between 16 and 1700 UTC. There you go. Which is 10 a.m. Pacific, because that's when steam wakes up. It's true. It's a true story. I know, you don't find it that interesting, because you knew that already. <laughs> but there you are. Uh, we are showing the big HUD at the moment, aren't we? We are showing the big HUD, yes. Right, we're on big HUD right now. Uh, and no, we're not playing on PC today, we're playing on Xbox One X uh, for today's trip. There you go, look, there's some Xbox stuff doing its thing. Xbox Madness, just to show it. So one other thing that's actually worth showing, uh, I mentioned before that, um, uh, that it's, it's an Xbox One X, which means it's capable of 4K. Um, and if you've got 4K hardware, it will use that 4K hardware. For Xbox One X users, uh, and also for PS4 Pro users, if you go into settings, a new option appears. Uh, when it detects you've got the hardware to cope with it. And this doesn't appear on PC, I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, but you've got this display mode. And this is basically a resolution picker. Now because it, my, it thinks my capture card is a 4K device, which is just really handy at the moment, I can select 4K and you won't see any difference. Um, 
but uh, you can even if you're on a 4K screen, if you want to run it at 1080p, you can just drop it back to HD, and then you'll get actually a performance benefit for running at 1080p. Or you can pick 4K and run it at 4K. Um, so you can choose that. Xbox One players don't even get that option because it's not it's not relevant. PC owners have got their own resolution settings. They can set to any resolution that your system is capable of. So this is just like a simple resolution setting for the Xbox uh, One X and the PS4 Pro. Well, I've had an important piece of information from Mike the T-Boy. Um, uh, basically, it will be uh, midnight local time on console is when it will release. And then uh, uh, Mike says 1700 UTC uh, for those who are on PC. There you go. As far as when the roadmap is coming out early afternoon, uh, British time tomorrow. Yeah. There you are. That's good. Uh, we've had a request for you to do an emergency stop at some point, uh, just to uh, to show off the, and look at the uh, the wheels while that's happening, and sound the horn at the same time. Okay. If you could do that while uh, while whistling show tunes, I will be suitably impressed. I'm not going to do the show tunes. Okay. I'm not going to guarantee this. Probably won't do anything because bear in mind we're going uphill as well. Okay. Well, do I? We just prefer, but see, because we're going uphill, you'll be able to show off a little slippage as you try and get going again. Uh, Luke asking if it's coming on disc. We have no plans to release it on disc. How can it be 1080p 30 and 4K 30? I don't know if you mean the game itself there, uh, Paradis or Paradice, I should probably say. Um, but uh, we're obviously we're only streaming at 30 frames a second and 1080p. Uh, have you got your frame rate counter up? No, I'm getting 49, 50 at the moment. You're getting 50 frames a second at the moment. Um, so uh, so yeah, we're uh, we're streaming at a lower frame rate than the than the game is actually doing. And uh, the, the the thing is that uh, if you play at 4K on a console. Uh, it's actually using up just as many resources as uh, as playing at 1080 because 1080 uh, is using 4K as the base, which it then downscales or shift scales to uh, to make 1080. So you get a nice sharp effect. So emergency stop vents the pipe across the entire of the train. So if you can see the rear of number there is coming up slowly, it's got to repump the train up to get the brakes off. Harry, it is not coming on disc. There we go. If anybody else asks if it's coming on disc or not, then you can say, no, it's not coming on disc. They said that on three or four occasions. Um, so uh, so there you go. Yeah, sorry for those who are hoping for it on disc, but we have no plans for a disc release. So one of the other things that's really handy um, now is when you press the pause button, it'll tell you where you are. So you can see we're at Ellerslie. So even if you don't know the route, you can pause, press the pause button and you can see, oh, I know roughly where I am uh, in the context of the route. Um, and obviously, if you go into this map, you can see exactly where you are. But again, there's no names on this map. Yes, we know. Um, but using the pause screen, at least you know roughly what town you're near as well. So that can be quite handy. And obviously, that's on all of the routes um, that you can that, uh, that are in the system. Right. So I'm going to switch switch gameplay now. Um, Ooh, and exciting. And so one of the one of the big changes uh on sand patch grade uh is the um hang on, pump up some clouds because they look so pretty um is the service mode um it's had a massive overhaul compared to what was there previously um and there'll be a lot of services that you recognize like q358 q352 they were there before but these ones that begin with y these are yard switching services and there's 14 of those which uh and you'll see that one's 15 minutes the next one is 40 minutes next one is 35 minutes they range anywhere between 15 an hour and a, minutes and an hour and a half each and i'd, I'd guesstimate around 10 hours or so of gameplay in total and effectively what they do is um, they follow a day in the life of the yard switcher at Cumberland Terminal managing trains going in and out taking the stuff they drop off adding cars onto the back of trains all sorts of things and there's all sorts of different variety in there um, that you get to them by just searching for Y1 if you just search for Y1 press the go button that will now give you 
uh, all of the services uh, in one list so that you can see them all nice and easy. And as you can see, they span the entirety of the day. Um, you can use, I believe, the GP38 or the SD40 for these. Um, and uh, so I was just going to run uh, Y103 uh, for a little bit, and we'll take a look at that. Okay. Because uh, someone in the chat who uh, adores switching, so... Uh, the, how many how many uh, timetable services were there in there? I didn't see the count. I can't remember the number sixty something. Um, 60, so which is sixty something. Okay. Sixty, which is uh, uh, it's going to be a, at least twenty more, I think, than there were previously. Uh, previously, there was it was basically just the runs up and down the line, um, uh, whereas now it's the um, you've got um, the. Uh, I want to call them banking helper runs. You've got helper services, um, right. you've got um, switching services, um, and the the other one that has been um, quite significantly refactored is there was a service set called U eight seven six was its code, uh, and the the way that worked was before was that you were a top and tail train, and then you would, um, hang on, let me get going and then we can chat. Uh, it was a U876. It was a top and tail train where you went up with 40 freight cars that were empty, coal cars. Oh, if I put the reverser in and put it in forwards, we've golden. Right, we're rolling. Um, so you'd get up to um, Yoda sidings and then you'd get into the other two cars, uh, the other, the rear two locos, drive them into the, um, the, the, um, the branch line which is this thing here. So you drive down this branch line, load up coal, drive back up right. to the top here, get in the other two tra trains and go down again, which was, you know, it worked, but it was not operationally correct. Really, what they do is they only have the two locos on the front and they back the train down, couple to a caboose that's sitting there, and then they put reverse the train back down with the conductor standing in the caboose. Now, we don't have a caboose, so there is now a loco, dead loco sitting there. And what happens is that you will drive forward with just two locos, so the journey is more challenging. Uh, you then reverse back down, couple to the waking loco, reverse back down, couple up. Then you pull out, drop the loco off, pull up to Yoda sidings. You then have to run around the train, and then you bring it back. So it's operationally, there's more, it's, just, it's a more interesting run. It's a, it's a lot more realistic to how it's done in real life as well. Uh, for those asking, I, th I thought I might as well give an official on this one. For those asking about pre-order on console, there is no pre-order on console. Uh, you, there will be a 15% discount waiting for those who want to play on console on the day of release. Uh, that's obviously a, that's a, a loyalty discount. If you want to benefit from that on PlayStation, you will need to order from within Train Sim World 2020 in order to get the 15% applied. So that's just... I'm just doing I'm doing my job there, Matt. You carry on. It's all good. Everything you're doing is great. I want you to know that. <laughs> uh, there was a bug in the spotter controls with the power line mission. Uh, I believe also, that uh, is with fixed. With the rail switcher from Map View, apparently. What, sorry? The, the, to, uh, to activate switches from within the map. That didn't always work perfectly. Right, let me just... Because that works exactly the same way as it always used to and still does work. If you do it from the pause menu, the game is paused. Switches will therefore not work. So nothing will ah, work. If you so do you it from the pause menu, to do it from the game the is paused. Game. If you do it from the map while the game is not paused, then you can change things. Now, what if I were to do it from within the pause menu and I then unpause, would it move? No. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't actually have any activity any action at all if you do it from within pause. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go back. All right, where are we going with these? We're going to pull all the way back to there. Uh, is any of this rolling stock not CSX livery? Uh, the sort of the rolling stock is the same rolling stock, so it's all CSX. Um, the tank cars, the box cars, the hoppers, uh, auto racks, and something else is the other things I've probably forgotten. Stack cars. 
the six the six wagons. Uh, they're all repaintable in the livery editor as well. Okay. Uh, one of the questions there was, do you use the hump yard? CSX don't use the hump yard. Um, what they use the hump yard now is for something called flat switching. Now this is the hump yard. We are in the hump yard at the moment, and um, the uh, the they dis discontinued use of the hump yard a few years back. Um, so what happens now is trains will come into Mexico side of the yard here and drop off and pick up and they'll also use this other side of the yard here for when they're heading westbound. So that's the way this is set up. This is set up using um, uh, that same technique of um, uh, uh, flat switching in here. Fair enough. Uh, Callum asked if we could turn down a contrast. If you weren't here for the start of the stream, uh, the contrast is off a little bit uh, on this uh, on this stream today, and that is due to the capture card that we're using to grab from the console. Uh, the game itself is uh, is what you would expect. So uh, so you can look at video that comes out in the next couple of days, and you'll see what it's supposed to look like. It is purely because of the way it is being captured and streamed this evening that the contrast is a little off. So the other thing mm -hmm. I can do is, uh, no, you can't see it from here, um, is I'm actually connected to Total Life uh, on this. Um, and uh, if I go ahead and uh, press and hold the X button, it will take a screenshot uh, and upload that. So that's really easy to use. Let's set the noise in. Uh, Ryan, you, you, you seem to have made your mind up already, but, uh, but just in case you haven't spotted the new stuff that was coming, uh, if you do decide to pick up Train Sim World 2, uh, you get two new routes, or three, if you're playing on console. Uh, you also get the Scenario Planner, you also get a Livery Editor, and uh, you get improved adhesion physics, and you get improved graphics, uh, all for around the same price as you'd usually pay for one route. So, uh, uh, it's up to you whether you think that's worthwhile or not. However, to say that we haven't done anything is rather unfair. So, uh, so... You might want to you might want to redress that a little bit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's me. That's, that's throwing some shade at the chat. <laughs> uh, can we talk about the options that we've got in the menu? Yep. Let me just stop here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, do your job first. Uh, but uh, but there you go. Options in the menu. Uh, notifications. Uh, I turned that off and I stopped getting those annoying things in the middle that says, you've opened a window. So that answers that question. Uh, button prompts are the things in the top right hand side um, when you move controls. Measurement yeah. units are units again, they're automatic, imperial, metric. So you can force it or you can let it follow whatever the route. And each of them is separate. So you can say, I want miles or kilometers according to the route, but I always want centigrade and I always want a ratio for my, my gradients. So you can, you can tune those how you wish to. Disabling junction derails is if you are going up to a junction which is not set in your favor, uh, or if you're, if you're going via the, the heel of the junction, um, then, um, the uh, this was not mean that it doesn't derail you. Um, speedometer Hudson. They won't all do that, by the way, because some junctions are set to spring. So that as you go over them, if they're wrong, they'll just force over. Uh, but if a junction is set to locked, with this option off, it won't derail you. Um, speedometer HUD sides. Um, you've seen this is the small version or the large version of the HUD in the bottom right-hand corner. Objective marker turns on the blue. This, you see the blue marker that I'm on at the moment, you can turn that on or off with this, this option. Um, 
sorry, the objective marker is the raindrop size thing. The stop marker is the blue thing. Um, next speed limit marker is the in-world notification of where the next speed limit changes. Again, other one's turned off. Next signal marker is the same for the signal. Next speed limit HUD is the thing on the top right hand side that tells you where the next speed limit is and the same for the next signal option. Next signal aspect is do I want to know what the aspect is? So I, if you turn on next signal HUD to on and next signal aspect to off, then you'll know where the next signal is, but not what the next signal is, which is actually more oh, realistic. On. Yeah. So you need to pay attention at that point. You can't look away because if you look away for just the wrong time, look back again and you've gone past the signal. Yeah, well, our signal might have been a yellow, in which case you're now flying towards a red. Um, so you do need this is the this is your level up, essentially. This is I want to pay a bit more attention. Um, and that's yeah. what you do there. I'll but you don't want to make it impossible in the process. Exactly. That's just a little bit of a notch up on the difficulty. Uh, scenario marker. I'm trying to remember. Maybe scenario marker is the blue one. I should probably know this stuff better. I never use the options. <laughs> Camera motion sway is the thing that turns on the wobble in the in the cab, turning it off, uh, and you'll be fixed rigid to the cab. Uh, to the cab, uh, turn it on, and you'll see the train wobbling around. Some people um, don't like the um, um, the sort of gives them a little bit of motion sickness, so you can turn that off if you don't like it. Right. Uh, display mode is uh, again this is a console option PC equivalent is just setting your resolution to whatever your system can cope with uh, display mode is on Xbox One X and PS4 Pro not on Xbox One or PS4 uh, because they can't do the higher resolution auto load journeys so wait, what happens is when you finish a let's face, say you go into journey and you start a journey uh, and you into the journey system when you finish that scenario or service whatever it is that piece of gameplay and you've seen the debrief screen if auto load journeys is turned on it will just take you straight to the next thing to do it won't pop up the what do you want to do next button it will just get on with it and get you into the next bit of gameplay um so you'll so you'll get a loading screen uh but there won't be uh, a back to menu click half a dozen buttons and come back in again no nope, it just takes you straight on to the next thing the assumption is you've done that one we haven't quit keep going and it'll just keep you then going from one bit of gameplay to the next bit of gameplay. If you don't like that, turn it off. The same thing is true for if this option is turned on, when you go back to the main, when you're at the root selection menu, uh, when you um, click on, say, Sand Patch Grade, if Auto Load Journeys is switched on, it will automatically go to your last journey and immediately go to the next step in that one as well. So it'll immediately then resume where you're going. So if you're one of the right. players out there, one of the very, very large number of players out there who journeys is how you play the game, then the default of Auto Load Journeys being switched on means it'll just always try and get you into the cab doing the next thing in the journeys as often as possible and keep you out of menus because we're not here to play menus we're here to play trains um, for those of you that want to play menus and choose what you want to do this is the setting you turn off and all that goes away and then it behaves pretty much the same as um, that you've been used to in previous uh, train sim world all that auto loading gets switched off right High DUI and Dovetail Live screenshots. So even if you don't have the HUD, the HUD hidden, um, if you turn this option on, which is the default, when you take a screenshot, the HUD will be hidden automatically. If you want the HUD on your screenshot, turn this off. And that way, when you take a screenshot, the HUD will be part of that screenshot. So you've got the option here to do it one way or the other. But if you turn this to on, which is the default, excuse me, then um, the... Um, uh, the hub. Well, you don't have to worry about the fact the HUD is on for you to drive and play the game. Um, it will be it'll be off when you take a dovetail live screenshot, which is the pressing and holding the X button uh, on here. Or we'll do we'll do a demo of that once it's working. Uh, credits and help. Fairly oh, what resolution does the screenshot go at? Is it whatever your native is, or is it always 1080p? I need to check that. I don't know. Okay, we don't know. Don't know off the top of the head. Good question, Megasim. We'll, we'll follow up on that one. Uh, right under controls, you can. This is where you can switch between immersion and classic controls. So classic is what you have in Train Sim World 2020. Immersion is the new one, and it's the default for Train Sim World uh, 2. If you find that you're not comfortable with it, or you want to go back, you can just switch to classic, and uh, that's how you know, they'll then use that. Um, What's the difference? 
there's quite a significant difference in the way the functions are remapped. Principally, the idea of immersion controller is to get rid of all the pop-up menus um, and make it single clicks and single button presses to do all those core functions. So opening doors is not six button presses, I think it used to be, or something like that. It's one right. button press now. Switching to an external camera is one button press now. Switching inside is one button press. And when you're in an external camera, you've still got full control over the train. You haven't got this switch between driver and switch between camera. Um, now, the downside of that, and the reason why some people may prefer to switch to classic, is you can do less with the controller because you, we had pop-up menus allowing all sorts of functionality with all the different camera types and headlights and wipers and all sorts of things. Um, so so if you prefer having access to all that function, you don't mind pressing lots of buttons, um, then all that functionality is available in the classic. But if you want to streamline your experience, all the core functionality is available on the um, on the immersion, plus the zoom, which is only available on the immersion as well. So that le I left joystick up and down for your zoom is on there as well. Zoom is only available if you're using the immersion control set. Now, someone else said, uh, why not just let us remap the controls? Uh, is that something we're planning to add in the future, or is it just not on the drawing board at the moment? It's not on the drawing board, but it's something that um, we've talked about. Um, and um, so I don't want to say never, uh, but it's not as got as far as they plan on a drawing board yet. It's still in the discussion. So phase. one of the things that's that's currently in development uh, for the PC is, is uh, support for additional hardware. Um, so if ever there were a time to explore that kind of option, it would be while that is in production. So, uh, so there are no plans for remapping right now. Um, but as the uh, as the 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 progress on uh, developing rail driver and associated external hardware is concerned, that would be a good time to have a look at it, or at least a discussion. Totally. <clears throat> Camera invert Y axis. If pushing the Jeff the the joystick up makes it go the wrong way for you because some gamers prefer pushing the joystick up to make the view go up some people prefer flight style controls where it goes down um, if it's wrong for you this is where you change it alternatively if you did the intro tutorial and when it popped up and said do you want to invert the controls and you press the wrong button and it ended up working the wrong way for you this is where you fix it right uh, controller sensitivity uh, is set to minimum by default if you want to turn around faster you can do that by just tiling this number up um, default movement is walk which means while you're running while you're walking around if you use the right trigger it will run if you change it to run by default then right trigger will make you walk and you'll be running by default so if you like to run everywhere really quickly and you don't want to hold the trigger down just change your default movement to run Audio okay. settings, cool. master volume, all the usual um, ways of dialing up and down the various different audio, uh, as well as turning on and off the subtitles as well. So that's kind Thank of the options. You for this, the options tour. Uh, we, we had a request from JP, who, you know, he does a bit of moderating and that, uh, has asked if we could get some banking uh, action going on. Yeah. AC 4400. Let's uh, dial up those clouds a bit. I'd always like to put a bit of cloud on there just to make the sky look a bit more interesting. Obviously, it needs to be white and two. That's all discerning livery. All drivers prefer, engineers prefer a nice, interesting livery. Uh, we'll try and choose uh, a service. Right, westbound helper is bringing the train over to her couple up, and we'll do that. <coughs> Can you still spawn on foot? You can indeed. Uh, we did have a, a question regarding whether there were any other stock liveries built in by default. So if you didn't fancy uh, your CSX livery, could you go with something else instead? Or even uh, an alternate CSX livery? So there are two liveries for each of the trains that are in uh, locomotives that are included. Uh, variations on the uh, on the CSX liveries. Um, there are no non CSX. There's just the two. I think it's basically just YN three B and YN two uh, in each case. Right. But is is the system set up for us to be able to uh, give people new uh, new liveries in the future? 
Um, yeah, I mean, we did actually with the Bright Futures update many, many moons ago was when the YN2 liveries were added. Um, so it's uh, it's certainly a possibility. A technical possibility. All right, let's get the brakes switched on. You'll get so used to doing this. This is the equivalent of operating the um, valves and cutoffs on the SD40 and the GP38. It's just done electronically in the uh, AC4500 because it's, it's all modern and flashy. Cut in and lead and then save settings. You can hear the brakes immediately respond. Generator field on, puts the power in. Uh, release the brakes, put it in forwards, put some power on. Uh, Sim UK, I'm not entirely sure you're operating off the uh, off the latest and greatest information. Um, uh, you, th there are several routes that will be available um, on release day. So uh, if you've got preserved collection going on, uh, you'll get East Coastway. Uh, here's a test. Actually, I might wait for Mike. Mike, could you confirm what the uh, release day preserved collection start? Actually, Matt, you you've been working on it. Can you confirm? What the release day preserve collection stuff is. Mike is probably the best person to talk about what's on release yeah, he's, day. He's typing right now because uh, <laughs> it might be trust. I, say, I bet he's not typing, I bet he's copy pasting. I know um, what's ready, but not yeah, necessarily what's shipping. You have, <laughs> you have the Bakerloo line, yes. Uh, you also have the uh, Schnellfahrstrecke from uh, Köln to Aachen. Uh, you get this sand patch grade, um, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Mike. I think Peninsula Corridor's in there. Am I right in thinking that? Hold on, here we go. East Coastway, Peninsula Corridor, uh, the MP15DC, the MP36, and Hauptstrecher Rhein Ruhr are all available on release date. Obviously, uh, what are we talking about there? Three of those routes are part of the preserved collection, um, but if you, if you own them already, they will automatically unlock. Um, uh, if you don't own them, you can always go pick them up if you want to. And uh, and on Steam, they will be on sale at that time. Thank you, Mike. See, Mike, he's always paying attention, but that's usually because he's waiting for me to say something stupid. Uh, and then in September, oh, he's, he's dropping more knowledge in there. In September, we have uh, Tees Valley arriving uh, with the Class 31 and the Class 20. Uh, Long Island Railroad. Uh, is uh, will come along with the uh, M3 as well, and Ruz ignored uh, with the DBBR 155. For everything else, see the roadmap, which is releasing tomorrow afternoon. Oh, yeah, that's a question I meant to ask. Are we still getting radio chatter here? I think someone said they heard it earlier on. Is yeah. the radio chatter included? There is. Flashing. Good. I'm done with all my commercial messages now. You can uh, you can carry on. <laughs> Well, Control Zero work on Xbox to jump back into the cab. Ooh, let me just try something here for you. Press what and hold the right stick. So what? that's now What's an that? that is now a that is now what? a function. Uh, no, 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 no. If you if you're fool enough to jump off your train, then it's your responsibility to go get it back again. Then you can just not use the function. But for those that okay, want to use enough. it, then you can press press and hold the right stick. You don't need the keyboard to do that function anymore. There's a lot of people ask for that, especially when we said, "Oh, just press Control Zero," and on the controller. Oh yes. In theory, it's quite hard to fall off the trains these days, but just you know, we'll watch one of Sam's streams. I beg your pardon. I never fall. I jump. It's deliberate. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Uh, Steam controller. Does the Steam controller work on PC? Steam controller emulates normal controllers, so I must admit I've got a Steam controller, but I've not actually tested it. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to work more or less the same as it does on Train Sim World 2020. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wouldn't expect any difference there. Uh, if the disc version counts as preserved collection, yes, any routes you own as a result of having them on disc will work 
in preserved collection and uh, and we'll let you know if there are any steps you need to go through to activate those it may just be that you need to have the uh, the disc in the drive uh, while you play the game so that they can be read uh, but we'll confirm that as soon as someone who knows tells me how that works because not even Matt knows how that works at the moment um, I believe it's Jordan who's trying to figure that out. Jordan is the one working on that with, with Sony Jordan, and Xbox. Jordan's basically spending 26 hours a day uh, making that work. And in Jordan we trust. Most definitely. Interesting. One of the other interesting features of the route there you can see behind, uh, just to the other side of the uh, the our locos is the, um, the car repair shop or car repair department. Um, what happens there is that uh, wagon, uh, freight cars that come in which are exhibiting some faults such as um, hot boxes and so forth um, are uh, taken out of service and brought over here. Um, they're then rolled into the building, maintained and then they're rolled to the other side when they're uh, fixed. So service mode, in some of service mode um, you will actually be using um, these sidings here to take to temporarily stable um, cars that are due for the repair shop and when you've gathered a few together later on you then deposit them uh, over here in these sidings for um, fixing and then later on there are cars that you can take here and bring back into service as well so the car department features in the service mode as well both um, taking cars out of service and back in again right that's a that's a good xbox based question mike this is one for you uh, so if I picked up uh, Train Sim World 2020 on the Xbox Game Pass, uh, does that entitle me to anything at all in Train Sim World 2? There you go, one for Mike there. I'll let him think about that for a moment while he, he thumbs through his documentation and tries to figure that out. Uh, there was another question I wanted to see. Uh, actually, uh, Ferro Vifate, wait till you see the, uh, the roadmap tomorrow, and then you'll be able to tell me. Um, uh, to get your answer there. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Uh, what else? Uh, I'd, is there any difference in terms of the, the level of uh, scenery between PC and console? Yes. Uh, console is um, dialed back. Um, obviously a console is not as, uh, as meaty as uh, a PC. Um, so you'll see, for example, the track render distance isn't as far, the scenery distance doesn't load as far, um, and it's focused on actually giving you a, a better experience. Now it's further than it was before, but it's still you can still see um, sometimes the, particularly in a really heavy area like this, you can see um, where the track runs out essentially. Um, right. I don't, I, how much of a difference are we looking at? I mean, percentage-wise. I wouldn't know what the percentage is. Uh, PC, effectively, um, if uh, so I talked in the last stream about level of details, uh, and there's also MIP levels as well, which is the same thing, but for texture quality. Um, the, um, um, so the consoles run on one MIP and LOD level down, and they dial the, the distances back in. Um, right. Uh, and, yeah, I think that's it. So close up, it's no difference at all, but further away, it sort of peels off a bit quicker. Right, that service starts at 8.33, so let's not sit here for 20 minutes waiting for that. Yeah, uh, we did have a, a very, very quick look at some shunting earlier on. I mean, very, 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 very quick look. Um, in terms of Game Pass owners, if you picked up any add-ons while playing under the Game Pass, they obviously belong to you, uh, and uh, and so they will come with you when you uh, play uh, Transcend World 2. However, we're going to get a confirmation on original Game Pass uh, content. There you go. Uh, we're waiting for confirmation, basically, which means... Oh, 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 yeah, that might be another one for Jordan. Someone wake up Jordan, who is apparently Bajoran, because uh, the Bajorans work on a 26-hour day. Just, you know, so you know. No, I'm not going to say that, Mike. I'm not. I'm just not going to say it. Until you have evidence, I'm saying nothing. All right, there we go. 
Uh, will there be an Xbox One or Series X? Uh, an X One X Series X One X One Series X One? Because Microsoft's naming convention is really good. Are the next generation consoles getting an update? Uh, only if it's required. So uh, the the game will reliably work. I'm reliably informed on the uh, on the next generation consoles. But obviously they're not out for another couple of months yet. Um, but uh, if a patch is required in order for the game to work, then we will uh, we will make that happen, presumably. Matt, we're not we're not going to make it allow it not to work on the new consoles, are we? Oh, we'll we'll definitely be looking at that. Yeah, we don't know what that is, so um, uh, so this, yeah, we can't give any ideas of times or anything. But yes, we just yeah, clearly we want well, to. Well, just work. let me know who to yell at, and I'll go and do some yelling. It's it's, <laughs> the, it's one of the few skills that I actually bring to the party. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, this is running Xbox One X at 4K. It's it's not running at 4K, is it, Matt? It's running Internally, at it's running at 4K, uh, and then it's downscaling to 1080p. So you're you're confusing people. I don't, I, I'll I'll explain it in simple layman's terms because that's how I understand it. So whether you play at 4K or 1080 on uh, the uh, Xbox One X or PS4 Pro. The game actually thinks it's running at 4K. If you're running at, if, if you've chosen to run at 1080, it downscales to 1080, which means you get a lovely crisp uh, HD experience. Uh, or you can bo- not bother with any of that and just run at 4K. So that's what he means when he says that he th- it thinks it's running at 4K, isn't yeah, it, Matt? Basically, it? yes, Sam. So you're running at 1080, and then we're streaming at 1080. Correct. As well. Yes. There you go. Yeah, see, I can I can put it in simple terms for humans. You just speak in ones and zeros and make the occasional bleep, and uh, you know, and expect people to understand what the hell you're talking about. That's what I have what I do during the day as well. <laughs> uh, good. Well, contact. Are there any any features on PC that do not? Uh, no, see, I've got Charles now. I've got it, who looks after Dovetail Life. He's now up in my face box as well, saying that I should be making more Star Trek references. Um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, are there any PC features that haven't made it across to Xbox and PlayStation? Can't think of anything. No, I don't, it is pretty much exactly the same across all three, uh, uh, but with the uh, the. Uh, the track draw distance and a little bit less density of scenery on console in order to keep it running smoothly. Mm. There you go. I've uh, I've made P. Yan all confused. We should just say it's running at 1080, but it looks really nice. Yeah, 1080 bits really nice. There you go. There you are. That's it. That's what it's doing. It's running at 1080. It looks really nice. If you want to run it at 4K, you can do. The setting uh, and the sections the, uh, option. Does the HUD scale if you're at 4K? Uh, I believe the HUD is set to a percentage of size, so it's the same screen estate right. whether you're on 1080p or 4K. It doesn't look uh, too tiny. Sorry, sorry, yeah. beg your pardon, didn't cut you off. Um, you can turn off motion blur on console if you plug a keyboard into your console. Uh, it's then Control F2 and uh, uh, the motion blur disappears. It's like seal it bang, well, except it's a keyboard. What we got? This is 44. Just waiting for the brakes to come off. Please, sand patch grade is CSX heavy haul. Yes, sand patch grade and CSX heavy haul are the same route, uh, but uh, the new sand patch grade that we're releasing is a uh, a remaster, or would you call it a remaster plus? What have you actually changed? Yeah, that's a question we've not asked before. What's what have you actually changed in between heavy haul and uh, and the new sand patch grade? In terms of the core game, or just the rote content itself? Because the game is transformationally different. What you've needed to kind of tweak as a result of it, because obviously, tons of work needs to be done to take an old route and turn it into a preserved collection route. But this is more than a preserved collection. Route. Oh yeah, this was a lot more than a preserved collection. This was um, so um, all uh, all the rolling stock had to pass over it to resolve its efficiency, the way it was built, uh, material usage, and mesh and skeleton complexity. The ground textures 
um, were improved so that they worked better. So originally, we did we didn't appreciate that the, on the console there's a limit to the number of materials you can have on the ground textures, and the artists um, went spray happy and they loved what they were doing. Unfortunately, the Xbox laughed at them. Um, so the um, so that's now been um, optimized to make better use of the stuff without uh, actually looking any different. Um, the um, uh, what else is there? So there's internal scripting on the locomotives has been redone to make it more efficient. Um, the uh, and I know everyone loves it when I talk about trees, but the trees have had a pass. We now get distant you are trees. When it comes to trees, well, it's, it's this is a route of trees. This is basically all you see when you're driving on this route. Um, so it felt important to get them right. Um, it was certainly it was a massive area where performance was so was being drained. Um, so um that was that was another area um th there's a number of areas in the core game physics were improved uh but that's core game rather than specifically with this content um, right i think i've covered off pretty much the majority of the the areas i mean it's very little of it has been about improving the fidelity or the the the, you know, the visual detail it's all been about making it do the same but use a lot less resources to do the same I'm with you. And also, where are we going? I think the no, brakes on the back train have not been set up. So I'm just going to have a look. Because I can't get the brakes off on the train. Oh, it's asking you if you want to give up control. You should you should tell it. You should have the option in there to tell it, no, I don't want to give up control. And if you ask me again, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> just, you know, just saying. Tower on trail. Yeah, that's uh, why can't we? Rem why is Bloom not a switch on or offable version? Uh, and that's that's not a console only thing. That's that's across the board. Bloom is uh, is a permanent piece of enablage. It's no one likes the Bloom, man. No, no one, one likes, likes the Bloom. Uh, that's more because it's, it, it, there are, there are think, probably better ways for it to be set up. Those in the same camp as me who don't mind the Bloom, and then there are those in the other camp, uh, those who uh, who dislike the Bloom. And then there is nobody in Camp 3, which are those who like the blue. No, it's not Handbrake. It may what just be I'm being that? impatient, in which case running up and down will just be a way of making it more exciting than watching a number go up very slowly. Well, it'll get your step count up. Yep. There's probably an Knowing you, there's probably an achievement for running 400,000 miles or something flipping ridiculous. Funny you should say that. Hold on, Jan... P. Yan likes the bloom. In fact, loves the bloom. Okay, fair enough. And I, I stand corrected. Okay, all the brakes are in trail. <clears throat> uh, does the deluxe edition include the preserved content? Right, okay, this is a, a good question. Thank you for asking it there, Sindar, because uh, quite a lot of people are quite confused because it's quite confusing. So in the deluxe edition, it also includes East Coastway. This is not a special version of East Coastway. It is exactly the same preserved collection version that you would get if you own it in Train Sim World 2020. So if you own it in Train Sim World 2020, you do not need to buy the deluxe version. You already own the stuff. So, uh, so there is absolutely no point in buying the deluxe version. Just buy the regular one and you're good to go. Uh, so the, the East Coastway that is within the Deluxe Edition is exactly the same as the Preserved Collection version. How much is the Deluxe Edition? Dunno. Plenty. A bit. Some. Uh, Money. Take the base game, add a bit more, go and look on the shop. It will tell you. There we are. Either that or Mike, Mike will post it for me in just a moment because I like <laughs> keeping it working. Um yeah, he's got he's got nothing better to do. He hasn't got kids or anything like that. Uh, no, I mean he's he's not working ninety seven hours a day at the moment. Hold on, there you go thirty nine ninety nine. In what currency, Mike? That doesn't help anybody. <laughs> I mean, is that rupees? In which case, that's a bargain. Um, I mean, what are we what are we talking? Dinar? That's pounds sterling. So uh, so it's slightly more expensive than that uh were you to uh, what well, slightly more numbers uh, than it's not the only currency mike uh, stop it um 
Uh, there are slightly more numbers involved than that if you are buying in dollars or euros or whatever other currency you might be partaking in, other than Swiss francs. Swiss francs it will be slightly fewer than that, but I don't know if you can buy the Swiss francs, so there you go. Uh, why was East Coastway chosen for Deluxe Edition? Uh, because it was felt like it was a good route to, uh, to include that had the kind of service that was already lacking. Um, if that makes any sense to take those words and put them in a slightly different order uh, because the British route uh, is uh, is underground we wanted something that actually let you see the outdoors uh, on a British route a little bit more plus it was one of the I'm not I'm gonna tell them the discount in a minute Mike um, uh, plus it was felt like uh, uh, East Coastway was one of our best routes uh, from uh, Trains in World 2020 you're rolling backwards there Matt Here's what the brakes will come off. You how to uh, how to drive, but uh, seeing this now, I mean, I've I've lost all faith. <laughs> yeah, you can giggle. Anyway, it's uh, sorry, I've been commanded by Mike. Uh, the the deluxe edition is also um, uh, fifteen percent off on Steam at present, and it will be fifteen percent off at launch on console. There you go. Uh, Flight Simulator 2020 is way better, according to Syed. Well, uh, yeah, it's also three times as expensive and doesn't have trains in it. So if that's what you want, go for it. It definitely doesn't do a flying experience. No, I, 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 you know, if you want to do another thousand miles of sky, I imagine it's probably uh, about as difficult as doing the last thousand miles of sky. Uh, there's not an awful lot of, uh, you know, track buildings, all of that kind of business in the sky. And then, of course, if you've got half a billion quid's worth of hardware in order to process Google Maps for you, it's probably quite straightforward. Uh, <coughs> Swiss routes. Uh, we got, we're going to talk about new routes a little bit, a little bit, tomorrow after the release of the roadmap, because we're going to be talking about uh, uh, what's coming up and what the team are currently working on. Have you broken this? I think I've broken this. I, this was why I have done this. This does work. No, it, it's not working now. No, it's not working now. I guess I'm going to be playing with this tonight. Work out what I did wrong. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, well, look, let me play with this another time. What I will do, uh, one of the things I wanted to do uh, was uh, there was a lot of feedback on Cumberland Switchback, the uh, the free roamy type um, scenario, and yeah. that's received some changes as well. Um, so Cumberland Switchback, you can do anything you like. There are no um, gauges of valid spelling of the word crucible. Um, the um, uh, yeah, so Cumberland Switchbacks had a bunch of feedback. One of the key things that was uh, wrong with it, and this made a lot of sense at the time we did it, and then shortly after, it was very much a facepalm moment. Um, it was set at a nice um, golden hour, just as the sun was setting. Mm -hmm. which of course gave you half an hour of gameplay before it was pitch dark for several hours um, which probably wasn't a great move um, so it's now in the morning, you know, it's 6am 6, 6 um, so you've now got loads of time um, that you can that you can use so in uh, in Cumberland Yard you'll notice there are locos spotted all over the place some of these are cold and dark uh, some of these are um, um, uh, are warmed up. Uh, you can hear them running in the background, um, but a lot of these ones over here are cold and dark, so you go in and there and do the startup procedures. You'll I find that familiar. I spent many a happy time starting stuff up in this yard. Yep, it's good fun, uh, and also setting up all the multiple unit stuff that all works. So you can you can join SDs, GPs, ACs in multiple different formations, and it all should work. Um, then you've got lots of um, freight cars dotted around. There's also additional freight cars now dotted around in the um, in the bowl down here. Um, so you've got other space, other other lots of other things that you can uh, do switching with. Um, so the the yard is is there for you to uh, to play with and explore. Um, fueling obviously works as it has done previously. Nice. Find something cold. What I liked doing most was just, was actually running down the side of the train, opening up the engine hatch and fiddling with stuff in there. I rather missed that when we stopped doing it, you know. 
uh, that was that was it was very satisfying to actually remember the procedure. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it was real or if it was faked or what, but uh, the procedure for firing the engine up was very uh, very satisfying. It is. It is a very. It is very nice. Uh, the GP thirty eight and the SD forty uh, definitely do. Someone earlier on was asking whether or not their custom livery GP thirty eight would work on San Francisco via the um, uh, the uh, scenario planner. Yes, it will. Same as the AC forty four hundred. Ah uh, no, he's, he's not saying scenario planner. He's saying timetable. Services. Timetable should do. Yes, but scenario planner, you'll have more that's options. A, that's a should do. Come on, Matt. You know better than I'm not going to let you have a should do. Okay, Matt reckons it might do, but it might not. <laughs> In which case you'll have to replicate it, and uh, uh, in the scenario planner, and then you can. Yeah, that's easy enough. What are we doing? Do we do we do some turntable action. Who are you fetching? I'm gonna go and get that get that loco. Someone asked okay. whether the turntable worked, so I thought I would get the turntable. Oh, working. fair enough. Fair enough. I keep forgetting this is actually one of the few routes that um, has a fully working timetable on a uh, tur timetable turntable on it. Let's lock it. Yeah, you see, and this is, I mean, this is why we're showing this stuff off, is because uh, console players never got this. No. Uh, so I, it's why we say that, you know, if you're a console player, you've effectively got three new routes. Uh, if you're a PC player, you've got two and a bit new routes, because uh, there are improvements to this that make it a, a slightly fresher experience. Um, but, uh, but ultimately, if you had CSX Heavy Haul, you've done a fair bit of this before. But of course, you get all of the good stuff, and uh, and you can fiddle around with it to your heart's content in the scenario planner. There you go. That's what it's all about. Prime that engine, and then uh, pull the ripcord, and you're away. I can't. I can't remember. It's been ages since I last I last fired up one of these. That broke this as well. What have you done? <laughs> This is the stuff that we're supposed to know works. Have you, you've just broken it, haven't you? And I, I know for a fact the second we're done is... Uh, I usually give it way longer than five seconds. I usually hold it down for a, a good verse and a half of, uh, of Toxic by Britney Spears. Uh, and that, I see it as enough time to have primed the, uh, the loco with. I've got no game sound here, so I couldn't tell you whether it's working or not. No, it's not. Matthew, I want to end the stream, man. We can't, we can't, uh, we can't end the stream with you having broken it because it looks like we've ended the stream because you've broken it. Have you pushed all of the necessary buttons? No, I've pushed the all the necessary hand? buttons. Yeah, I got the crank in there. It's all set up. I don't know why that's not working. <sighs> Let's try a different one. <laughs> no, no, that's a that's a sigh of defeat. That's a sigh of uh, what you want to do is you want to start saying clearly, make up someone's name. Uh, was uh, was working on this just early to come up with something spurious and people might believe you. I won't, of course, uh, and I'll uh, I'll point out because you know I've got a massive ego uh, that, uh, that that's all you're doing. There we go. Go on, this one's going to work it's, this time. It's going to happen. It's gonna work. The sound Go keeps on. cutting out. Go on. Go on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Give it a go. Go on, I feel good about it. I've got no idea, of course. Uh, Golden Spike Rail videos are saying you're not doing it right. Really? What am I doing yeah. wrong then? You've got to inverse the polarity of the neutron flow. I'm not using the flux capacitor correctly. No, it's not. That is not the first thing you do to start the loco. You've got to push some other stuff first. It's already isolation switch defaults to start, stop, isolate. Okay. More antimatter, yeah. Wasn't there another one? No, the only one that you need to do is that one. Oh. Yeah. I haven't started. This is the problem. You have to sit in the loco for physics to switch on. Really? So it won't actually do it unless you sat down first? Basically, sitting in the loco 
enables it from being a simple physics AI train and turns it into mm. a player train. Without that, if every train was sitting here and um, running the um, uh, physics, then um, performance would be bad. Um, okay, what, look, I get that, but I'm just going to put this out there. We might want to tell the players that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah totally. Because <laughs> because otherwise, um, there'll be someone somewhere who's having to you know hang around on, on the on a forums, live stream and uh, uh, trying to demo on a it. live stream and is going to be beset on all sides by it's broken, it's a bug. Yeah, indeed, Mr. JMB, your backside completes the circuit. Oh, that that's that's been removed. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. I thought that was quite charming, personally. But uh, but that's okay. <laughs> right, and uh, James has just spit his drink out all over the table. See, I thought it was quite funny. You've got to warm the seat before you can warm the engine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to tell the players. I know we're telling these players, but uh, these players aren't going to tell anybody else. All right. Okay. Have you have you turned the field generators on and uh, and switched the uh, the doggle to uh, whatnot? Yep. Yep. You put the key in. And have you stuck another fifty p in the meter? Oh, I don't want to go silly. Your 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 toggle's not in the right locale up there. Mm -hmm. Just after the YI. What well, the engine room light? Well, obviously you want that on. I mean, you want that on every time you do anything, frankly. Don't let me put you off. Come on. I, uh, I want to get out of here at some point. It's not going to work. Taking <laughs> but we can't leave now unless you make this work. Yeah, isolation switch to start. That's what I was talking about there, mm, yeah. I've already done that. Yeah, right. To run. Okay. I believe you. Thousands wouldn't. It's run now. It, it was start, but we're running now, so we want to run. Uh, ME valve and car freight cutout I did. The brakes are released. Freight, that's now set on it's lead. Nice. It's, it's usually me that gets all of the unsolicited <laughs> advice from the chat. I'll just repeat it to you. Because, uh, uh, you know, you never get advice from the chat at all because you're such a ruddy professional. There you go, battery switch. Quite how the loco started with the battery switch open, but let's just gloss over that fact. Look, let well by you saying let's gloss over that fact. Very clearly, you did not gloss over that fact at all. No. But we're moving now. Let's just put it on the turntable. And, and somewhere, the other map P is now feeling a very strong disturbance in the force. And you know it. <laughs> and you know it yeah mind you Matt P is constantly suffering from a very strong disturbance in the force the force has never stopped being disturbed uh, right okay don't need the lights we're only going as far as the turntable and then we're going to uh, grip it and rip it here you go go on spin that spin Shall we spin that it? Puppy. go on then. People came here to watch a, a train go very slowly round in a circle. There you go. Now, when I did this on my uh, on my YouTube channel, I uh, I copyright infringed the theme tune to the Magic Roundabout, and I sped the footage up five times. It was very funny, very very funny. Even though I say so myself. Are we nearly there yet? Go on, crank it. Not planning on going anywhere in particular, but there you go. We've 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 arrived at a place. Hey, tremendous! Let's lock lock the turntable. What's up? There you go. Good. Uh, I I can't hold on. I'm gonna have a crack at your name here, but I'm probably gonna get it wrong. Uh, Yauha. It's clearly not it. It, there's probably a far more elegant way of pronouncing a name. Uh, why not start simulating as soon as you touch start? Why do you need to sit in the seat? Because there is a difference in the game uh, between 
uh, trains that are AI controlled and trains that are player controlled. There is a bunch more stuff that switches on, basically, in the, the in the backside that you don't see. Uh, if it is player controlled, and therefore you need to tell the train or the loco or, or whatever you want to call it that it is going to be player controlled uh, before you uh, before you start using it. So if it, until you start using it, it thinks it's it's AI controlled. You can also only sit- have one train in that mode. So as if, right. you, if I was to get out of this train and walk over to that one, physics would switch off on this one. Gotcha. So if you let's say for example you're in um, some other train um, and you let's say you're walking or you're flying a camera around a yard while your train trundles through the yard and you go yep. and touch a door or you touch a control on it if that enabled all the physics then your train would suddenly um, switch over to simple physics and that wouldn't necessarily end well um, that's only because you can only switch transition between the two while they're stationary um, right. so. Um, because Simugraph is a complex simulation engine and running multiple trains with Simugraph would, would hurt quite badly. Um, it's a good way to turn it into a slideshow. It's a very good way to turn it into a slideshow. It's how it used to work in the very, 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 very early days of uh, Train Sim World and we decided right. that was that was a bad thing. Um, so, um, but, um, no, there is clearly some, some room for advising the user that they're doing something that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like locking the doors so. until you've sat down, for example. Right, well, look, you've just moved the train. Stick us back on the screen so we can say goodbye to people and we can, you know, embrace some of the evening before we have to, you know, go and do it all again. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That's, uh, well, it's a, a slightly in-depth, uh, slightly nonsensical and uh, a slightly random and haphazard look at Sandpatch grade ceiling. Uh, hopefully you got to see something you like the looks of. Uh, and if you do have a question that... Uh, that whatever that didn't something or other that, that didn't float your boat or you've still got outstanding questions please do take them to the official forums and uh, and we'll get you an answer to that we are back tomorrow we oh yeah they, are. they don't trust just one of us on these streams no you've got to have us both uh, it's, it's fine uh, well, we're going to be doing cold to Arken and talking about the roadmap which releases tomorrow uh, which you will be able to see from around early afternoon of the UTC. You will be able to see the roadmap up on uh, the Train Sim World website. The news section is where it'll be hidden. Once someone's seen it, everybody will be telling you exactly where it is anyway. <laughs> so uh, we'll be talking about that while driving very fast. Matt will be driving tomorrow, so it should work perfectly, just like this has. Perfect. Uh, Flawless. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We'll see you tomorrow if you turn up tomorrow. Uh, Otherwise, we won't see you tomorrow. We'll see you when we see you. Um, Say goodbye, Matthew. Goodbye, Sam. Right. And, uh, yeah, cheerio. (laughs) See everybody. Turn turn the thing off. You foxed me there. I didn't think you were going to do that.